Hey, what guessers? Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, normally we do this out in the barn, but it's February 2015. My barn is currently about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's just too damn cold out there. So, I'm spending my winters inside nice and warm working on electronic stuff for wood gas while I'm waiting for the temperatures to get a little nicer. This spring, one of the first things I'm going to be doing is building a much larger Victoria. Some of you have heard me refer to it as the Elizabeth machine. The Elizabeth is going to be targeted at running you know, V6s, V8s, uh, much larger stuff than I've ever run. So, to simulate that engine, I'm going to be flowing gas at rates of like 50 cubic feet a minute. Now, when I go to flare that much gas, that's a lot of combustible toxic gas coming at me real fast. I don't want to be around that. I don't want to be around that if the girl sneezes. So what I've been working on is a way to remotely light the flare. And I have a couple options. Okay, the first and easiest is to take one of these. Hot surface igniter for plain old natural gas propane. All I have to do with this thing is just hook it up to 115 volts, it gets white hot, and the gas ignites. Very easy to work with. Uh, the downside of it, however, this thing absorbs about 400 watts of power. So if you're trying to do an off-grid application or, you know, some kind of a really depleted solar system scenario where you want to top off, this can get tough or you're going to have to run the generator just to run your flare igniter. Which, that's not real cool either. So, you know, real good for a lab setting, real good for playing around. Uh, not so good in the real world, I don't think, in my opinion. And the next option I could go with is these two goodies. 24 volt transformer and a gas stove igniter. And this is nice, this is a lot less power. Um, but again, I've got to have 115 volts of utility power. Not exactly what I want. You know, I'd rather have something that will just start and run on battery power and kick the generator on and away you go. So, again, not bad for a lab situation, but not really what I want. What I've decided to try and go with is what you see in front of you. This is nothing more than the auto mixer, which controls the fuel air ratio. The auto mixer is cycling a little 12 volt relay. Now, this 12 volt relay is doing nothing more than acting as a set of automotive points to drive this automotive ignition system. So, every time the relay fires, a little spark plug goes off. So, let me demonstrate that for you. If it's quiet, you can probably hear that relay firing. You can't see the spark because there's too much sun, but what I'm going to do is at the end of the video, I'll splice in a section where I zoom in on this uh, in the shade. And you'll be able to see the spark. It's actually a halfway decent spark, considering that the only thing that's powering it are eight AAA batteries. So, my hat goes off to Luke and Pascal. They were the innovator or they were the inspiration for this. So I had promised to show them this and uh, here it is. Now we got to get it out, test it with some real gas. The auto mixer to make all of this go, probably going to be another two months. I owe one of these to Arvid Olson up at International Supply. Uh, but it's just been too cold to play. So I have to make good on that, get that up for some testing. Make sure that's all debugged, and then this will be available through my website, and I'll send out an email, notifications. So, here we are. Now I've got a decent way to light gas from a distance. You know, stay away from the explosive, poisonous stuff. And we'll get her out, get her tested, see how she does. Thanks, folks. Stay warm.